Hello my lovelies, so this is Lizzie from Love From Lizzie and today I'm bringing you the 2018 December 10 cards one kit video um, and as always I'm going to start the video off by showing you how I make my card bases. I either split them lengthways or widthways and then I score them at five and a half or at four and a quarter. Um, I use a Teflon bone folder and I've just treated myself to an EK tools scoreboard which is fantastic. Um, and that's how all of my cards are made. That's the only time that I'll be showing it. Um, this is how I do a lot of my cutting of patterned paper. I will measure it out with a pencil so that I do it by eye largely um, and then I'll cut it down. But I often over measure so that I can trim the edges off because that way I know that it's going to be perfectly sized and I don't have to line it up too well. And here this is quite amusing. I thought I would um, let you have a laugh at my expense because I'm using a pair of left-handed scissors, being that I'm left-handed, and I just couldn't do it. I had to admit defeat and get out a pair of right-handed scissors to cut with my left hand. I will persevere and practice with them, but the blades are around the wrong way and it's just confused me. <laughs> so anyway, okay, I'm moving on here to um, the next part, which is where I've taken some of the um, specialty pattern paper from the kit and I've cut it so that it's on, on a jaunt um, and I've marked in pencil two little boxes which I've left without foam tape and I'm just putting some mini glue dots on and I've removed all the backing and now I'm going to line that up on top of my card again I've always leave a little overhang just so that I can trim it down and it's all perfect and now you'll see why I put the glue dots and left the space because I've picked up some of the um, lace or crocheted ribbon that comes in the kit and I've just folded that under and behind into the glue dots so um, that way there's not going to be like a big bit of a big bulky bit with um, foam tape on it as well here I've um, arranged some of the little bunting flags from um, the pack that comes in the kit and I'm arranging them sort of in a line along the bottom there so this could look like bunting it could look like the bottom of a curtain or it could just be a pattern <laughs> whatever you fancy um, and here I've picked two of the puffy stickers but I wanted to sort of um, have two that layered together so I've held them as I wanted them and marked them with a pen and then I'm just snipping a bit out of it to create a bit of a, like a well so that you could, I could sit the flowers in. And then I'm taking these tiny weeny little pearls, um, they're the little white ones, and I just put one on the end of each of those little bunting triangles, and that's the end of card one. So now we're into card two. Um, I've die cut a circle out of a gray card base. Obviously all the cardstock that I use comes in the kit. Um, and then I've used that same circle die to die cut some of the patterned paper which is like a pink polka dot which is very cute and here I've cut a piece of patterned paper and I've lined it up on the inside of the card where it's supposed to be I've drawn a circle with a pencil through the hole and then I've laid my die on top um, of the hole and die cut out of that circle there um, I've put lots of foam tape along the back of that patterned piece and I'm lining up not using the edge of the paper but using the circle that I've die cut from the centre and here I've picked three of the roses that come in the kit and I have I'm folding the wires round on it, on themselves so I've created a bit of like a messy nest at the back and I'm just using some glue dots here to fix them and I did use quite a lot <laughs> and here I've got some multimedia mat because it gives a really good strong hold and I need a really good thick glue so that it holds its shape and then give that a good firm press and then I pop a couple of puffy stickers down at the bottom um, just to give a little accent in that bottom corner and then I'm taking the Nouveau drops that come in the kit this month and I'm just going around and I freehand it but what I do is I turn the card rather than trying to move my hand because if my hand's comfortable I'm more likely to get them regular and then I use my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen just over the edges of the petals on the flowers just to give it a little something extra. And that's the end of that card. So card three, here I'm doing some um, watermarking with the Versamark. I've picked two butterflies, one of the larger ones and then one of the smaller ones. And I always start at the bottom corner when I stamp a background like this and then work my way up alternating between the stamps because otherwise you're on the risk of leaving gaps that butterflies or whatever you're stamping won't fit in. Um, and here I'm taking one of the patterned 
papers and I, again these dies I use these dies quite a lot I try to keep extra supplies to a minimum so when I've used something extra I tend to use it a lot <laughs> so all I did with that's one sheet of patterned paper that I've die cut twice the two different circles from and I'm using both sides of the pattern paper um, I'm putting some foam tape on the smaller piece which I've just put a puffy sticker on which says thank you and then layering it onto the larger one and here I've laid everything out so it's sort of like a dry fit to see if it's going to work and I've taken the doily and I'm just dabbing on some antique linen distress oxide just to take that white away from it but just because in the background paper there's sort of like a very mellow yellow or cream or vanilla um, and I'm also doing the same for the ribbon um, that I've chosen this crochet or laced ribbon um, because it's white obviously it lends itself perfectly to, to being coloured so here I'm putting ATG all over the back of um, the topper piece and lining up the ribbon into it now here is where I'm trying to work out how I want this to work so I'm taking a piece of release paper from my foam tape and just popping that over to the right hand side sticking down onto the doily the topper and then I'm sticking the doily onto the card front making sure that the doily hangs over the edge a little bit I think things look so much more organic if they're not completely sent either you know smack in the middle or hanging over the edge looks really nice and now I'm folding the ribbon round. I'm using the lines on my grid mat to make sure that I have it all straight and then I'm sort of gently lifting the topper and using my tweezers to steal that piece of release paper out from underneath and then I tuck the um, the crochet ribbon underneath and just use my tweezers to poke that in and then give it a good firm press down and that tape will hold and then because I've used my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen um, I use it on part of the butterfly wings on the larger butterflies so just to give that background just a little something um, you can see it better in the picture that's at the end so here's card four and I'm going to make a shaker card and I actually use some of the specialty card stock for my card base on this one I die cut a circle from a piece of patterned paper and then I've die cut the heart out of a pink piece of the pattern paper and just trimmed off the um, the little arrow so it just says with love here I've taken a piece of acetate which was incidentally from last month's kit because it was still it's still here on my desk <laughs> um, and then I am you just use a tape runner to attach the acetate down and this is how I do um, the double thickness I put the two ends together on a strip of foam tape and then I use my fingers on the edges and push it down as I go then that way there's a really nice seam along the edge and there's not a piece sticking out where all the sequins are going to stick to and then just using non-stick scissors I snip it into nice thin strips okay so this is how I now attach um, this little um, heart inside what will be the shaker I use a piece of very neutralized masking tape and then I cover my little heart with glossy accents um, and I get into all the little nooks and crannies because I don't want any sequins getting caught and now that I've pressed that down I'm able to use my finger to hold it down and then pull it away and that um, masking tape just lets go and then I'm able to poke the fine nozzle underneath that little corner and this is uh, something that took me a long time to learn if you take the release paper off both the back and the front your foam tape will bend so much nicer. I mean, look at that, it's a pretty little circle. <laughs> um, and then I've gone around the rest of the, the back of the card with double depth foam tape, taken all the release off, and I've poured the sequins directly over the heart because I know that's um, in the right place. And it was at this point that I realized how static some of those gold sequins were, so I've put some extra anti-static powder tool to try to stop them jumping, and it seemed to do the job. Um, and then the most important thing here is to make sure that around the circle you give a really good firm press because you don't want any of that to be loose because otherwise the sequins will jump in there. And here I'm just accentuating part of the pattern on the pattern paper, which is there's like a, there's a stripe that runs on this one. And on the centre stripe I'm just laying the widest of the three peel-offs. And here you see this is why I never throw scraps away because there's always a little piece needed for something. And... Um, then yep, 
that sadly just wasn't long enough but it will be long enough for something else so it went back on the sheet <laughs> um yeah and then just trim the ends off of all of those pieces and that is the card all done ready to shake here we are on to card five and i appreciate that i'm marching right through this i am sorry and i have got some messages that i'm going to give to you a little bit later on um but i just wanted to make sure that i'm explaining everything as as it happens so here i've picked up six oxide colors um we've got antique linen we've got old paper we've got tea dye faded jeans iced spruce vintage photo hickory smoke and stormy sky um and hickory smoke I, i'm sorry i didn't use in this video <laughs> i used in a different video a uh, different card sorry I need to put my teeth back in. Sorry, it's quite late here at the moment. And all I'm doing is, for the background, I'm using both antique linen and old paper to sort of um, smudge the background. I've used a white card base. And here um, I'm having masked off portion of the bottom and now I'm laying the stencil over that piece that I've just ink blended. This, this isn't my usual sort of um, card making style. So I'm... I'm trying, I always, you know, I like to try to do something that's a little bit either out of my comfort zone or something that's new to me. Um, that was the tea dye, by the way. And here I'm now moving into Stormy Sky. Um, and I'm just dabbing, I'm dabbing the ink blender onto um, the stencil to try to get some texture, I suppose. This is vintage photo, by the way, now. And so there are sort of almost very loose circle marks um, on the stencil and I'm not worried about that I'm quite happy for that this is now faded jeans um, and the moment of truth and I'm quite happy with this I mean obviously it's not your usual butterfly colors or color scheme or but I think it's quite soft and I'm just using the tea dye with some of the bodies from the stamp set just to fill the bodies in where um, the butterflies don't have them and I used tea dye for all of them. I was umming and ahhing about changing it up, but I thought it would take away from the leaves, the wings, sorry. Okay, and so here I've taken some of that crocheted lace and um, I used the tea dye to um, dye that as well. And at this point I decided that the white at the bottom was too stark, so I've used both antique linen and old paper again and just sort of ink blended over that whiteness and up to that line. And then here, I'm actually, I'm trying out some of the Lawn Fawn glue. I was given this at Creativation in January earlier this year, and I've never used it. So I thought I'd give it a go, and it's held very well. It came out of the bottle nice and easily, so, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, I attached that down onto the card, and then here I'm using some of the Gold Specialty, and I've just die-cut out the Thank You, and I've I used um, Multimedia Matte because... I've laid it over the crochet and the card, so it's at a bit of an angle, so I wanted something that would really hold it nice and still. So, we're on to card six. Now, unfortunately, I did actually lose the first portion of this, which um, all there was was me do it using a grey card base. I then cut a piece of the specialty patterned paper um, and laid that on top, leaving off a quarter of an inch all the way so that around the edge there's... A tiny little gap and then I ink blended onto the doily using stormy sky and antique linen just very gently just to take the whites away and it matched therefore with the pattern paper I also used another piece of the pattern paper just to create that sort of little band running down the center of the card and I used a peel off along either edge so there you've just seen me test the doily to see if the oxide ink was dry because it's quite pigmented it, you know, it, using an embossing powder on it, you do need to make sure that it's fully dry because otherwise you'll stamp your image, you'll pour your embossing powder all over it and it'll stick everywhere. So here I'm using my Versamite mark and I've picked one of the sentiments from the stamp set and I'm just stamping it directly into the center of my doily. And then using the embossing powder, put that on give it a good tap to make sure that there isn't any anywhere else because of the the intricacy of the design you know the, the embossing powder wanted to stick in some places it wasn't supposed to but but it all came good and I made sure that my heat gun was fully fully hot before I put it to the doily because the doily is so thin I didn't want to 
burn it or damage it or anything so um it was nice and hot when i bought it on but here you get to see how lovely and shiny the embossing powder is this is the ivory pearl obviously this was in the kit and um i really hope everybody's as happy with it as i am but i absolutely love it it's so shiny <laughs> um here i'm taking some foam tape and i all i'm doing is putting it on the back of the doily but not behind the holes so that the edge of the doily is still organic and can move around a little bit and then I use three little pearls in the bottom right corner and that is my card finished okay card seven so um this card sort of highlights one of the techniques that you can do with the stamp and stencil set. So I've taken a piece of the white cardstock from the kit and I'm taking the Oxide in Stormy Sky and I'm, I'm using my ink dauber. Now the finger dauber would perhaps be better suited but I wanted to show that you could do it with just a normal ink blender by holding it sort of at side. I'm, I'm hoping you can see that in the video there but I'm just using the edge rather than the whole circle and I'm just dabbing very very gently and a lot I did this this took quite a long time to make sure that it was a nice smooth finish um, but I'm happy with how it came in the end and the important thing here is to leave the stencil on the paper leave it attached and now I've put it into my misty and I'm taking the coordinating stamp the coordinating butterfly stamp and then that stamp will sit really nicely in the well of the stencil then you can close your misty and now you can take your stencil away and you can be confident that when you put your um, card back in there, as long as you've butted it right up into the corners, you'll be stamping in exactly the right place. So I've used my heat tool to dry the oxide. I've just double checked with the embossing powder that it's good to go and I'm not going to get it stuck everywhere. And now I'm using that same Stormy Sky Oxide ink to stamp the body over the butterfly. And I love this effect. It's like the tone on tone. It's, I think it's really very pretty. And I could have just left it as is. But I wanted to add a little bit of extra shine to my card. So I'm heating bossing. And this also gives you an opportunity to see how the ivory pearl embossing powder almost takes on a little bit of the ink that is used underneath. Um, and I've trimmed down the obviously the little backing piece there. And I've die cut the thank you from the silver satin finish mirror card from the kit and here I'm just running um, a middle size peel off all the way around the edge and something that I always like to do is this which is mitering the corners so I lay the blade from the inside of the corner to the outside of the corner and then just push it down I don't try and drag it through because it will just stretch the peel offs and then it loses that look so if you just push the blade down it will just cut through and then you can pull the two away and it looks like a picture frame in the corner it looks really really classy so here I've trimmed down a piece of the grey polka dot pattern paper and I'm doing the same again here with the peel offs just to continue that that theme of having the peel off border around the edge and um, mitering those corners as well and picking out the little bits um, and then putting some foam tape on both the back of the topper piece and the backing paper and I'm using a silver the, the specialty card stock here I'm using a silver card base so this this is only going to go to someone really special <laughs> you can't give away that that good paper on a card base to anyone so um, I'm layering these up now and that I have to use my tweezers because I was umming and ahhing about positioning it lower or higher but I ended, I ended up going with just in the middle, middle for diddle and yes that's my card done. So here I'm moving over into card 8 and this is one of my favourites, it's tied, it's this one and another one. Um, so this is a bit of a technique-y thing, I mean maybe everybody knows how to do this but I'm going to explain it as if you don't so please bear with me. <laughs> I have taken the circle die that I've used quite a lot throughout this and held it onto the piece of patterned paper. Now when I cut this backing piece I cut it a quarter of an inch narrower than usual and half an inch shorter so that I could separate in the middle. And then I've taped the papers down onto the card base where they need to sit and then taped my circle die on top. The important thing here is to leave the die 
taped to make sure that that circle in the middle stays perfect you need to keep them attached so I've laid it onto my card base drawn a circle in in a pencil and so I could position my stamp and now I'm just using um, an eraser to remove the um, pencil lines spider web lines as my graphic design teacher always used to say it's very important to use spider web lines <laughs> I've used the anti-static powder tool and I put my hand onto the um, stamp just because it's a new stamp. It's the first time I'm using it and um, because there's quite a lot of solid aspects to it because it's this beautiful brush lettering, I wanted to make sure that I got a good coverage and I did. Um, and then I've heat embossed the sentiment and it's so lovely and shiny and it says spread more love. Now I've turned, flipped over the pattern paper with the, the die and as you can see I have completely covered it in foam tape and I've done that because I've heat embossed on the card base it's a little bit warped which did make it a little bit more tricky to sit down straight but then once it was down I just gave it a really good firm press make sure that all of the adhesive from the scotch tape holds it but that's one of the reasons that I really like using scotch is because it does have a really good hold and now it's just the joy of taking away the die and looking at that perfect circle that's been left. So I'm super happy there. And now I'm just taking the narrowest of the peel-offs and just um, highlighting or accentuating that little um, cut apart piece that was that's left there. And then I also run one just along the bottom of that pattern paper just to tie in a little bit more of that blue. And trimming off all the little, the little bits those little bits you will find everywhere I must I must warn you I find them in my makeup bag they're like in my washing up bowl they're, they're everywhere <laughs> anyway so that's the end of that card um, and this card number nine this is my other favorite I think um, I did want to mention I'm, I'm going to talk whilst you're watching this one because I think it's quite self-explanatory I had a sale in the love from Lizzie store for thanksgiving and black friday and cyber monday you know all rolled into one um but i didn't actually tell anybody on um youtube about it and i feel a little bit bad about that and this video has gone up quite a bit later than scheduled because of how busy uh, we were off the back of that sale i needed to make sure that every order that was placed that wasn't a subscription add-on order had to go and they did every single one went yesterday um because I, I love the fact that I'm able to say that we do same day shipping or the very closest to it. So um, being that yesterday was Monday, it was it was just um, it was just really important to me to be able to do that. So I'm, I'm really pleased that I could. Um, but this video is going up late, so I didn't give anybody the opportunity on Saturday, which is when I usually would have uploaded the video, to say we've got a sale on. So. From the uploading of this video, for the next 24 hours, I am going to reinstate the 30% off sale so that any of my YouTube followers that didn't get the newsletter are able to enjoy that sale. So there we go. I've, I've managed to say my piece. <laughs> All I've done whilst I've been jabbering on here is I used hickory smoke, having measured out from a piece of patterned paper where I wanted the ink blending to be. I've cut two very thin strips of specialty cardstock and here I'm doing a bit of die cutting. So I've die cut at the small circle from the white cardstock and here I'm ink blending using that hickory smoke but I didn't add any extra ink to my dauber. I've just um, used what was on there just to give it, just to take that white, whiter than white edge off of it. Um, there you saw me again testing the... Um, embossing powder over the oxide ink to make sure that it was um, going to play ball with me and not going to stick everywhere and it was fine and here I am in Versamark stamping two different size butterflies and they're two of the smaller butterflies they're both the same so um, both the same design and I'm just heat embossing those coming away from that masking tape so flying up and flying down um, and here's the flying down aspect. Um, having obviously die cut more than just the white circle, there was also the larger circle and the thank you, which was also in that blushed gold that I cut the strips from. So, I think I'm about caught up here. Again, this isn't normally the sort of card that I do. I'm not a big ink blender. Um, I think I, 
I like patterned paper because I, it's very predictable, it's very straightforward. Um, and here now I'm stamping um, one, the smallest of the two butterflies onto that white circle and I'm laying the um, thank you down onto it as well, having used glossy accents on the back in a fine nizzle, nozzled bottle. I'm just popping an acrylic block on top to make sure that all those tiny winny little pieces stick down and here you can see why I wasn't bothered about what was in between the um, masking tape there because I knew that I'd be covering it over with this piece of patterned paper. And now here this is where I'm trying to decide where I want these gold bands and I decide I like them at the top and at the bottom. So I cut a couple more pieces so that I can use both. And I think because this card is a little bit out of the ordinary for me, it's not what I usually do, I think that's one of the reasons why I like it so much, because it, it has come good. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> so here again I'm using that glossy accents just to run along um, the two seams, the one that along the patterned paper, and then the one along the edge of the ink blending. I do that for both the top and the bottom. I would like to quickly add, obviously, that the sale that, I'm, that I've just spoken about that I'm putting up into the store is a store-wide sale. It's 30% off of everything. So other branded products, Love From Lizzie products, all my mega packs. And the only things that are excluded are my card kits and the subscriptions because if I discounted those anymore, then I'd, I'd have to start paying people to take them from me because it's um, um, I can't do those any cheaper. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> but anywho, here we go. So I have now attached on the um, topper and I've trimmed off the edges and that's the end of card nine. So we're now into card 10. This is um, using, that circle is actually an off cut from a previous card when um, I cut the circle for the shaker, um, no, I apologise, for the roses card. So that would have been a scrap. Um, and then I'm heat embossing one of the butterflies, just very simply stamping and heat embossing. There's no colouring or blending, no use of the stencil, just to show that the stamps work all by themselves. I am die cutting the um, thank you die from the gold again. And having trimmed down this piece of patterned paper, I'm now just using my tape runner to attach that onto the front of the card base. And here I'm using the lines on my grid mat to make sure it's in the middle and then I use the bottom edge to make sure it's straight. And I've cut this sort of little belly band and I'm holding it in place and then with my right-handed scissors, with my left hand, cutting the edges off, I'm running some tape runner over both ends and I'm using the ivory of the lace ribbons or crochet ribbons to just tuck around either end. I've taken a piece of foam tape here and I'm laying that down but not going over the top of the ribbon ends. And I'm cutting some very fine little pieces, little strips, just to tuck either side of that ribbon, just to make sure that the band is supported nicely and not going to collapse. And then laying the butterfly over the top, I position... Um, the band over the card and here I've just doubled up some foam tape and I'm looking at where it's going to go and I'm sticking it instead of on the back of the butterfly and hoping that I get it in the right place with the belly band sticking it straight on the card front and then attaching the butterfly on top of that and then I'm just attaching again using the glossy accents the little thank you in the center underneath so it's a very super simple card but a nice quick and easy one so my leftovers I've got specialty I've still got a nice card base that's good to go um, I've got one two three four five six seven full sheets of pattern paper one two three four five six seven eight nine that have been partially used I've obviously got all my peel offs puffy stickers the stamp and stencils are obviously good forever I still have three doilies, lots of the lace and the pearls. Sequins, there's plenty of. I've still got two flowers. Obviously, the embossing powder and the Nuvo drops will be last me forever, as will the dyes. There's plenty of bunting still left. Um, and oh, there, these are the buttons that were buried on my desk, so I didn't use them. I do apologise. So these are my additional supplies. So these are all the bits and pieces that I've used. Um, if I try to keep up with how quick my hands go, I'll be in trouble. I will list off the oxide colours though. There is Antique Linen, Faded Jeans, Iced Spruce, Stormy Sky, Hickory Smoke, Vintage Photo, Old Paper and Tea Dye. Um, used glue dots. 
Versamark, a lot of Versamark. The anti-static powder tool is a great help. My heat gun, my die cutting machine, lots of pairs of scissors, <laughs> um, an eraser, some like standard kneading tools, uh, my stamp chamois and my craft blade and and here we go here are all the cards i really hope you've enjoyed this video and i really appreciate it when people let me know which of the cards is their favorite so that i know what sort of things to do going forward the design team i think are chomping at the bit they've been waiting for me to release my video so hopefully um there's going to be lots of inspiration these are currently still in stock they are under very limited stock but they are still available so if you want one you can get your hands on one now um, and perhaps enjoy some of the sale items as long as it's within 24 hours of this video release. Until next time, happy paper crafting. Bye!